ask me, I think someone likes you. Why don't you come with me and let me show you something? Show me what? Just trust me. There are days, though, when everything falls into place in a series of events so ridiculous. My sister, no, get more fun, get more power. That if you paid attention, you'd realize you're hurtling straight into the arms of your destiny. There's always a price to pay. You've just got to be bold enough to pay. Chicken. Oh. We love chicken. We're black. Hi, this is. Join her. Lo, I'm so bad at this. Yeah, I'm back. How are you? Change the face of education. I mean, you change the face of journalism. I am here looking for the principal's office. Sorry, girl, you're in the wrong place. But I'm an English teacher. Maar this Afrikaans school. The spec said that you didn't need experience. I weet niet kom jij toegelaten in die school. Kom. In your new South Africa, forget it, man. You, you're always blaming everyone in your life for your mistakes, so that's your fault, Malume. Mazukuluma ganja alawena. Yeah, don't even think about it. Charlotte, I've got my ways. As we go past, yeah, my bank they go on and on. So I'm going to do it. So I got to make a living. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Bang it! Enough. We're too bad. We can't walk up so. Why are your people so obsessed with competing with our people? Death penalty is crucial in South Africa today. Crime is sky high. Don't your people have enough? We have nothing. live good afternoon hello everybody and welcome to another roundtable session hosted presented and brought to you by the hotel film commission and we have on the panel today with us for the day five session of the conversations legends big brothers as well as veterans of the industry. Uh, my name is Adzi Uga, and uh, for those who don't know or know me, I'm a film director. And with me today is Mandla N, 
entitled Jerry Moffat King and entitled Cello Mikey and Mube. And I do not have to say any more than you already heard from me because their work and their repetition basically speaks for themselves. Um, gentlemen, welcome. Good afternoon. So wonderful to have you with us today. Hi, Adze. Glad we could join you today. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Hey, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Thank Great. you, Adze. It's fantastic having all of you here. I, I must say I'm in the presence of greatness. Let me just acknowledge that and give credit to who credit is due. Like they say, all protocols observe. And let's just get straight into it. Um, we're here because, of course, there's a very, very, very topical and hot potato issue on the table. Um, it's not one that is new to any one of us. It's very familiar. It affects each and every one of us in a particular way. And like the old saying goes, an injury to one is an injury to all. Yep. The situation in our film and TV industry does require addressing. One thing we're not here to debate is whether things that are happening right now are right or wrong. We do know that they're wrong. That is not what is up for debate right now. I suppose the issue is how do we address what we know is wrong? How do we redress it? How do we fix things? How do we make these spaces safe for our women? Yep. And that's basically the responsibility and obligation of every practitioner in the South African film and TV industry right now. So we are going to lend our voices. I'm going to ask our honorable gentlemen to lend their voices towards this crusade right now in terms of having this conversation to unpack how we can actually get to the promised land of safety for our women. It's been a long journey. It's been hard. And all of us have been touched in one way or the other. But I suppose today we will find ourselves shedding some light and hopefully coming up with some solutions. And uh, for lack of a better word, restitutions and executions to more or less take us forward. I would not like to be having the same conversation same time next year. For, 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 for me, progress has to be measurable. And what we'd like to do today is get to the bottom of having measurable progresses, measurable successes, and measurable outcomes in terms of sorting this issue out once and for all. So um, I'm going to open the floor. I'm going to ask you to basically introduce yourselves. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll get the ball rolling without further ado. So age but, age 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 before beauty. Uh, that the that the move again, that the market. I thought you meant Mandla. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, age okay. before beauty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um uh, let me declare I come from a high school culture of debates and a little bit of the uh, academic kind of things. And I just thought, please allow me to just lay a foundation for what I'm going to say throughout in answering your questions. First of all, we're saying decolonizing spaces for women, but how does colonizing reflect itself? How does it show itself in the spaces for an actor, for a crew member, for a, a coordinator in the office. How does it look like? And broadly speaking, you enslave the woman. You keep them powerless so that they cannot negotiate or own anything. That's what colonizing is about. Two, you limit, you place the obstacles that are bought and frustrate their efforts. In other words, when you are intimidated by them, somehow you put in places hurdles that you know they cannot surmount and therefore you can keep them in that place. Three, you subvert their successes. Uh, and, 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 and you take to yourself the economic and credit benefit for what they have done or what they are doing. And, and lastly, Payment for opportunities that don't belong to slaves. The envelopes, the sheets, all those things. 
are what you begin to see in that environment. And, and by the way, the people who enslave is everybody and anybody. There's no race, there's no local, there's no woman. Women do it, men do it, local do it, international do it. Everybody does it. If we hide that fact, we will not address that particular issue. And what are the weapons that these people use? The scarcity of opportunities. Look, there's a queue outside if you're not interested to give me what I want or do what I want you to do. The desperation, anything you want, as long as you can give me. As a belief man for my career, please give me a breakthrough and, and that desperation. And then collusion for those around us. And by that, what I mean is, the, the issue is not by only those people who do do these things, but those who allow these things to happen around them. So turning a blind eye to these things is also our problem. And then the absence of policies and authority to hold people accountable. We don't name and shame. There's no policy that says on this set, blah, 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 on this production, on this, there's none of that. So we just do as we like. And so decolonizing, we will talk about later. But I just wanted to just frame for myself and those who are uh, watching, just what are we talking about when we say decolonizing? What, what, what monster are we addressing? Let me stop there. So let me accept the ball rolling. Thank you very much for that, Intente Jerry. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's also address something that actually I think also will help us frame this particular conversation. We are men. And yeah. we are at the advantageous point of power. Yeah. We are men who have been practicing. We are men who have been operating in this industry for, for, for a significant number of years. And yeah. we have been privileged by our position and by our power. Here we are right now speaking to an issue that affects women. Women whom are our sisters, our daughters, our friends, our wives, our partners. So you could say this is clearly a situation whereby the wolf will have to speak on behalf of the sheep. So we will mm -hmm. have to basically engage with this sensitively and sensibly as well. And it's very easy to be general in terms of how we engage, but I want us to be specific. I want us to tell our stories. I want us to actually speak to the heart of the issue in terms of what we like to see. So I'm gonna ask this one question and then we get the ball rolling with all the other questions. Is the current state of affairs, is the current state of affairs in the South African film and TV industry a commendable one when it comes to gender-based violence and of course, the toxic workspace that women experience virtually every day. Is the current state of affairs commendable? You know, if I may just, um, you know, because Brajeri summed uh, the whole thing up and it was very good that I allowed age to, you know, to direct us here. You know, one thing that I wanted to say just to commensurate what Brajeri has said was is that Colonization is patriarchal in nature, you know? And, you know, I've always found myself uh, drawing a similarity between the, uh, the liberation of black people with the liberation of women. And uh, when you look at them, somehow there's a way where, for instance, even the oppressed, basically colluded you know with uh, the oppressor in order to oppress them and also you would find that somehow women themselves find themselves having to collude with the patriarchal nature that you know that that that, that is happening you know in, in 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 the space but one thing that we are going to do, have to do as you had said uh, Adze, is that we are going to have to be I think very frank, authentic, and direct to the to 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 to, to the thing, uh, to to the topic. And as much as it would be like, 
it is the wolf speaking for the sheep. In this case, I think it is the wolf talking to other wolves. You know what I mean? And basically saying to the other wolves, this kind of behavior is not acceptable. And we are the ones who have got to, because we are the ones who are going to have to call each other out in the first place, you know? So, and by calling each other out, by addressing issues that are pertaining to this, um, you know, to, to, to gender-based violence in the workspace, you know, I think basically al almost it will even maybe sensitize us to make sure that we don't carry it even home, you know, even to our homes. And maybe let me leave it there for now and yes. not take too much space. Yes. But let me rephrase that question again, right? Okay. In terms of our state of affairs, are we better off than before or are we worse off? Um, are we better off? It's a, it's a very interesting question. Are we better off or are we worse off? If, for instance, I don't think we are, I don't know, maybe we are, I don't know whether we are better off or worse off. Because if you look at also even, like I said, uh, like I started by saying, colonization in its makeup, it is very patriarchal. You know what I mean? And when you look at patriarchy, you actually can see it. Basically, patriarchy goes hand in hand with power. Mm. You know what I mean? And, um, and, and almost, you know, I think we've got to actually even get to a space, you know, and maybe not trying to be philosophical here, that you will realize that uh, patriarchy also is just basically a spirit more than can be associated with, just, with gender. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because women in power, sometimes you would find that they would um, basically almost act like, in, you know, like men when they have power, you know. But the truth of the matter is that where the problem is at is actually with the male uh, gender, you know, and I think men, men, uh, you know, we, we, we basically are basically caught in a situation because somehow life is moving. Uh, even culture is moving, even ways of doing things are changing, you know, for instance, I mean, when we were growing up, for instance, you know, I mean, you know, it was, you know, in order to get the attention of a girl, you actually had got to, you know, approach it, you know, and there were different ways. There were harsh ways and there were also maybe clever, smart ways. You know, you know, you know, you know what I mean? And sometimes things don't operate in that way anymore. Things human behavior has actually mutated because of the influences of other cultures. So instead of being better off, I think basically now we are faced with a, with a more complex situation and we need to apply a more complex approach or, or maybe a very simplistic way in trying to um, find a solution to this complex problem now. Okay. Mandla? Mandla? All right. Um, first of all, thank you very much. It's an honor. Hazen, can you hear me? I think you can hear me now, right? Yes, we can. Okay. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much. It's an honor being part of this uh, panel with uh, 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 um, uh, such legends. And also as well, um, on my side, I mean, I'll speak on behalf of obviously young producers and young creatives within the industry. And uh, my experience, you know, coming into the industry, it's always been, you know, as a young man, you, you know, you go out there, you're a go-getter, you go uh, 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 um, get what you want and all of that. And um, what I find is that these types of conversations never, ever happen. You know, as young people, we are not having these conversations. When we look at uh, 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 the space, especially when you go into production, it's always, okay, let's have HOD meet, let's have uh, meetings around creative, let's have meetings around, okay, how we're going to basically run the production, but never the culture of the film industry that we are in. And if you look at other corporate uh, uh, companies, there's culture management, there's a, a brand culture within the workspace, but within production, it's kind of like we go in there, we mine the films and get them out. So for the first time ever, I'm about to shoot a production where I'm going in and I'm saying, 
my first production meeting is basically addressing the equality and these issues. And also we're going to separate the men within the production and speak about these issues and educate because a lot of the time, as you are saying, uh, 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 Mr. Silo, as men, we are used to, you know, shela and all sorts of things. We play in ways where, you know, a lot of men think Esan, you know, it's innocent and all of that. But then they push it too much. It becomes a violation. So that's the type of education that we need to uh, uh, speak about when we start our productions. That must be on the forefront of every single production meeting before going in, because at the end of the day, we need to always make sure that it's in the forefront of what uh, 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 people, of, of obviously, you know, the production crew, the people that are going into production, so that they're educated, they are aware of it all the time. And it's not just something that, you know, you speak about on the beginning of production, uh, uh, um, production process, and then leave it. It must be something that you reiterate. So every single, uh, 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 every single week or start of a new week, we need to basically speak about that. Not only as men, but also women and also as a collective to say, okay, cool, we are doing well. This is where we are going and let's be conscious of it and let's move. And uh, I find myself now going into production, you know, that is part of a huge agenda. And it's thanks to forums like this, thanks to JFC, for obviously putting up uh, this panel to educate a lot of the men. Because most of the time we think like, you know, within urban spaces, yeah, this is happening. This is out there. This, you know, people are aware of it. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of education that needs to happen. And that's what, uh, you know, obviously, you know, on my side, I'm conscious of and I'm doing on a daily basis, not only for me, but also for my production crew as well. Okay. So fantastic. So we kind of, have consensus, even though we have not said it directly, but we do believe the situation actually has not improved over the years. That women basically working in the film and TV space have found themselves at the receiving end of abuse, of harassment, coercion, and of course, assault. Now, let's talk about why that has been the case. Why has it gotten worse? Why is it that men have always felt entitled to harass? Why is it common practice for men to sweep this behavior under the carpet even when it is brought about? And what is responsible for these violations? I want to believe that the film and television space is a professional space. I think like it also has it. A... Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Is... People yeah. are not, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead, sir. You know what I mean? Uh, punishment. We need to punish uh, behaviors. People are not getting punished for those types of behaviors. So obviously, we know within sets, especially on my side, as uh, running a production company, I need to make sure that when I see that type of behavior, I call it out and it becomes a dismissal. So a lot of the men over the years have not been uh, uh, punished for those types of consequences. And that's why it's basically continued. Okay, Dr. Jerry, your thoughts? Aze. Yes, sir. Uh, going back to your first question without saying much about it. Uh, sometimes things have not gone worse. It's just that we have become more conscious and more vocal about those things because our parents took it as normal. That's why they always spoke about Nyamezela, mm. only to the women and nothing is said to the men within a marriage culture. Mm. Now, when you, we started going into productions theater and productions television, uh, the, 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 the couch became normal to the point that other women would say to the other or newcomer, listen, there are ways of getting up the ladder. Mm. Otherwise, forget it. Your mm. pride, your dignity, your integrity is career limiting. Mm. I ran a workshop in a major company and women afterwards say, Jerry, we hear what you're saying. The fact of the matter is what we are talking about here is career limiting. So 
it's it's gone on and on and on because there is nothing and no one to call these people to order. As men, we can see the one who um, who sources the extras mm. and, and, and then telling his friends and crew, listen, I've got uh, this kind of crop for you today. It's almost like when people go to Makufe and get their friends to get students from the university. So it's, it's become a culture of silence. And it is the silence, I think, more than anything, the collusion and the silence that we need to address amongst ourselves to the point of then possibly ourselves being blacklisted for jeopardizing so-and-so's production or business or what have you, because who do you think you are? This is not your production. This is not, this is not, this is not. Let me leave it there for now. I'll, I'll come to Tetecelo in a, in a minute, but I, I am aware of certain actresses, right, who have been vocal about harassments, right, from male counterparts, cast and crew. And when they went vocal about these same issues, what happened was that there was a silent blacklisting. Many of those actresses were unable to get work on other projects because they were flagged as being problematic by the previous production whereby they raised their voice in the name of being vocal about harassment. Yeah. Now they find themselves marginalized, ostracized, kept in the corner, like you said, sir, career limited. Right? Petecelo, how would you or what would you have to say in terms of just giving some, some thoughts with regards to that sort of consequence? Because from what is clear and what uh, Mandela has said, there's punishment mm. for, there's punishment quite okay that, has, that is coming into place for men who are guilty. But it also seems like there's punishment for the women who have also become victims of such. Well, I mean, that is what has basically, you know, happened in the, you know, in the thing. And I think for me, that is why I say, you know, we got to look at this thing almost in a very broad aspect uh, and, and, and look at how, for instance, like socially, how does this patriarchal spirit also functions, you know, and also even now in basically in gender relations, how does this patriarchy uh, happen? Because... For me, this all is all about the, the, the what is it? Um, it's about power relations, mm -hmm. and when power relations are at play, because it actually even amounts to the the the, the thing. Uh, and uh, maybe in this case, maybe one has got to actually maybe just maybe stay focused on the sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then not you know uh, um, play on the whole power power play because then it, it actually just sort of like confuses it. Sexual mm -hmm. harassment. Sexual harassment is a, is a, I mean, like I said earlier on, that there was this whole thing that in the past we were just used to Ukshela and all that and, 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 and whatever. And, and, and also, and when you look at Ukshela in itself, it Ukshela had something about having to persist on something. You know what I mean? And I think basically now uh, things have got to change in such a way that. Even if, you know, uh, what is it? That kind of culture has got not to happen maybe even in the, in the workspace. You know what I mean? If ever people need to meet socially, let them meet socially, but let them not use the workspace as a place, you know, to, to, to try and be social with one another. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm. I, I guess, I mean, and, 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 that, and that in itself, you know, it, it's going to, I mean, it's a, it's a very complex and, and it's going to complicate maybe even relations, but maybe one needs to actually be able to draw those uh, th those lines and so that even again when it comes even to acting that the lines are drawn very clearly how things are going to be done okay you know? um, so, yes um, you mentioned culture and Tete jerry i want to just throw this question to you mm. do you believe culture is partly responsible for the persistence of this toxic nature that we see on film and television sets? 
Yes, I believe the old traditional culture and the unacceptable film, cult, film and television culture, both of them, mm. both of them. Listen, please understand, sometimes we, we want to run away from this word patriarchy. Mm. The, what, what's central to that is the entitlement of men and the excusing of men. In other words, don't you understand he's a man? And, and, and the fact that he's a man, it's almost as though he is disabled. He can't do otherwise. There's no responsibility. There's no accountability. Just like the animals that have a mating season, you can't hold them responsible. So these men on sets in the casting rooms and whatever, well, you can't help, they can't help it. And until we say they can and they should, they can and they should. They should. And, and, and if when Mandla has that meeting with his production and he says, listen to me, none of this nonsense will be tolerated in this production and it is a dismissible offense. And, and they, believe you me, even women will call him names. Even women, mm. because for those who don't know how to do business and how to do film and television without the sheets, then they, you've disarmed all of them and they don't know then how to get the roles mm. without the envelopes and the sheets. Mm. Mm. So uh, mm -hmm. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, 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 a message that came through from Lubuntu Webster. And this is what she says. Mm -hmm. It's not about to speak about punishment, predatory behavior, but this is not possible if it is not contained in company policy. Production companies must be willing to enshrine this in their policy. Your thoughts? Well, well, that that says it actually. You know, that, for me, that that, that you know that, that that says it. It it has to be in you know, it, it has to be company policy. So, so Mandla, for example, right now in in, in your contracts for crew and cast, is there a clause that deals with harassment and violations of such nature? now we have made it a huge priority and it's only because of uh, 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 because we can see the revolution is happening you know we need to change this behavior also uh, 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 you know coming to the fact that there's a lot of people that get affected you know sometimes if um, women speak up they also get every revolution there's teething stages there's teething mm -hmm. stages there's also casualties in the beginning. But after that, it's going to be a culture. We're starting a new culture. A lot of people are going to basically now see it as the norm later on in life. But before that, there's going to be a lot of uh, 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 people who are going to not understand it. People are going to resist it. People are going to uh, go against it. And it's up to us to constantly just reiterate it and reiterate it in every step of the way. And also we cannot behave like, you no, know, people understand it. It's the norm, you know what I mean? Obviously, you know, people, uh, 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 you know, they, they, they are expected not to uh, sexually harass other individuals at work, but for other people, it's second nature to them. So we need to always reiterate in the workplace and put it in every single uh, contract to a point where we are putting it right up on set, exactly like when we put call sheets up, it needs to be exactly like that. It needs to be a culture that we enforce. And as I said, there will be casualties in the beginning, but once it starts becoming the norm, we'll be in a much better place as the film industry. You know, you know I, I remember when the president was addressing the country uh, a few weeks ago, and then he mentioned that the gender-based violence in South Africa right now is also a pandemic, right? And a pandemic, mm -hmm. of course, is something that calls for urgent, urgent, urgent intervention. And you will see everywhere you go, in terms of the corona pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, every office you go to, every workplace, I'm talking about every workplace, every school place, every social place has signs up there warning people, wear your mask, 
sanitize, keep your distance. It's written in red everywhere you go. Billboards telling you, thou shalt not, or this thou shalt do. And, yeah. and in my opinion, the policies that basically make their ways into our contracts should also be that visible on every wall of every production office and every production company and every production set in terms of telegraphing what is acceptable behavior for anybody. So that once you enter that space, you know you are under contract to behave a certain way. And if you don't, you suffer the consequences, be you male or be you female. You know, so- you know, I, I, Yeah, yes, sir. Sorry, sorry, Adze, you know, sorry, sorry to interrupt my apologies to, for, for interrupting you. You know, as you're talking about the, the, uh, that, you know, we have a pandemic and then GBV is also regarded as a pandemic. And the, the other thing is that for the pandemic, we are actually, you know, coming all together and sensitizing ourselves around the thing. And with this conversation, I actually feel that this is us actually, and I think it's very appropriate for us to even to have this conversation on, or, you know, on, on, on the subject, because it is us who have got to actually start uh, addressing these things with other men. I love this. There's this uh, little anecdote of a, of a carpenter working you know, in his workshop and he's got a little boy, seven year old, and the seven year old, I'm coming with a story now. <laughs> you know, you know um, he's working with a seven year old and um, as he's working, the seven year old keeps coming, Papa, what is this? Papa, what is this? You know, and he's distracting the old man from you know, doing his work. Now in the workshop, there is a map of the world on the wall. So the, pa mm. the father, takes it off, tears it into pieces, throws it on the floor, gets a cello tape, gives it to the boy and says, put this map together. And you know, that distracts the boy for a while while the old man is working. You know, after a while, the boy comes back, you know, and says, hey, Papa, look, I put it together, you know? And the father says, wow, that's beautiful, you know? But now here's the thing. Behind the map of the world, there is a drawing of a man's head, okay? And the moral of the story is, if man can get his head together, the world would be a better place to be. <laughs> now, we have this thing in also in culture or in our culture, and we say um, man is the head of the household. Okay? And now, let's play with that analogy or with that, you know, for a while and take it a little further. And we look at the physiological makeup or the physiological duties of the head on the body. You know, on the head, you find two eyes. On the head, you know, for, 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 you know, for, to be able to see and have vision. And on, on the head, you find ears to be able to hear, you know, any dangers and whatever, and be able to communicate with the world. Hmm. On the head, you have the nose, you know? On the head, you have the nose, which brings oxygen to the body. Yeah. On the head again, you've got the mouth, which is used for communication, which is used again for, you know, putting food into the body. But on the head, fundamentally as well, um, or most importantly, you have the brain. You know what I mean? And yeah. this goes, you know, it, it hangs to this thing, uh, uh, how uh, Brajeri, of saying, uh, you know, he's a man, he, you know, and as if man cannot control himself. Yeah. Now, if we take now that uh, you as a man, let's say you are the head, and you look at the, what the head does to the body. The body, um, the brain, the head regulates everything that is on the body. And it regulates it with precision. It mm. never even basically abdicates its duties or even go tired. There is, as long as your brain is working well, there is consciousness at all times. So which, one thing that we actually have got to teach now is consciousness and basically um uh, what is it moral consciousness you know whatever um uh, decorum consciousness you know and uh, and those things you know we've got to bring them back and sometimes we think that all these things one will learn by osmosis it is impossible maybe sometimes there's got to be even etiquette classes you know as far as even acting is concerned on 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 on, 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 on um, on set, you, 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 you get what I mean. And uh, mm. even, even the etiquette of how we go into, actually we are going to play 
into that space. How do we do it in such a way that we don't infringe on people's uh, whatever uh, privacies and liberties? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, thank you so much for, so, for this input. And I uh, just want to bring us back to, again to a particular point. Uh, Mandela mentioned about, you know, uh, going down the line in the near future, this will be the new culture, right? Uh, whereby mm -hmm. we have this framework whereby what you said, Nanta Tesselo, will be the norm, whereby people basically are inculcated and basically taught. But, but let's talk about now. Let's talk about what's yeah. going to happen now. Because the future is still coming. So but that future will be determined by what we do now. How mm -hmm. do we make these spaces safe? For, you're a young actress. You're coming into the industry, right? You, you, you've gone to school and you've got your training, you've got your degree and you've done your auditions. You know, how do you or how do we assist the young ones coming into this industry and prevent them from falling victims to these sort of violations and ill treatments? What do we do now to help us address the issue? I, I, I think I'd say partly people like GFC, if they say anyone and everyone that we fund here is a code of conduct that we yeah. expect. And yeah. we also have monitors to make sure that it happens, just, just as one, it, mm. to, to make sure about that. And then those men that have bought into this, those wolves that have bought into this become catalysts one set at a time, one production at a time. Listen, um, I, I, I don't think this person will mind Yesterday, I say to an actress I'm working with, look, I can see here and there you're struggling with our language, yes, so to whether I'm on set or I'm at home, feel mm. free to call me for assistance and you don't have to give me or pay me anything. Now, it's like, did you just say that? I say, yeah, I just said that because there must be no strings attached to all those who are ahead, assisting those who are following behind. And Absolutely. that is why, it, you see, a lot of things cannot happen by community, mm. they cannot. They mm. need champions, they need pioneers, they need men for all seasons who stand alone in a production yeah. and do it. And, mm. and, and, and Mandla becomes an, a, 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 the exception. When you work with Mandla, you're protected. You can tell all the actresses. Yeah. Even when in your audition, don't promise anybody anything. And, and Mandla puts a, a, a lady in those auditions to make sure that the ladies are protected. Those kinds of things. But for me, one of the things is the staple singer say, I'm just another soldier in the army of love. And mm -hmm. I'm asking for soldiers of this ideal in this industry, one production at a time. Mm. Uh, thank you for that. Any more gentlemen? That's actually powerful. Uh, I, I cannot, cannot hear Ntate Selo. Selo is muted. You are, you are on mute, Ntate Selo. You are on mute, Selo. Okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, man. I can hear you. <laughs> but here's the thing. I think also what we need to, I don't know if GFC can initiate this, but there's an idea that we should have where a call can be made for problems that whatever, you know, like people in the industry, you know, to call to that thing and then that thing should be, but also the thing is that we don't have, I mean, whatever, what body would we go to that would re help to actually resolve these kind of issues? You know, if ever they, they, then maybe this thing has got to be addressed by, is it IPO or CIFSA or, or SAGA, you know, all the, or these other, other organizations for the crew members, you know what I mean? But there should be a place where when a person feels uncomfortable, if they can't, uh, the, the, produce, the production can't deal with it, then that person is, should be able to go outside the production to have this, this matter addressed. 
but for maybe example, even to have a to have a number where people can call when they are in distress of well, being like, sexually harassed. Absolutely. In the corporate mm. space, most companies, be it the banks, insurance companies, and even manufacturing industries, they have what mm -hmm. we call human resources. You know, I mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. uh, actually ever working on any production whereby I know that there was a human resource because that line item doesn't even exist in the budget. You know, the company might have a yeah. human resource officer, but the productions don't. So, yeah. and yeah. Course, you are afraid of engaging with the executive producer, you know, of course, then mm -hmm. you are at a disadvantage. You know, but something in, of that nature is what is commonplace in, in most corporate spaces. Because like I said, the film and TV space is a professional one. It's not a... Yeah. But I'd say, I think, I'd say, I think what, what Silla is talking about is something like an ombudsman. An ombudsman. In the industry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. I, I just got a quick message now from uh, a, a lady. And I don't know if I should say her name, but she just mm -hmm. says, she got a question. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. how would you advise a young girl, a crew member, who got harassed on set by a cast member and also a crew member at the same time? And nothing was done about her complaints till she had a mental breakdown. You know, that is just said, you know, that, 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 that is just said, but that's what happens. You know what I mean? But I guess, you know, in, in having this conversation, you know, we are trying to make sure that that thing doesn't happen ever again, you know. And uh, I think, uh, who was it? Uh, somebody, you know, spoke about, you know, in, 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 in this whole thing, there's going to be in, uh, working, there are going to be uh, casualties, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But uh, in order to prevent any more casualties of this, of this, of this, of this kind, we have to make, uh, start putting in measures. And you see, like, if ever this young woman had a place where he, uh, you know, like he could go and call, you know, and call somebody, and then so that basically that ombudsman comes and deals with the production uh, company, that would have been something else. You know what I mean? So, so maybe GFC can, can, might can we take me. can we take a chance? Can we take a chance yes. and say for starters, let them be given a number at GFC where they can call, and call, then they yes. be referred somehow. You yes. know that. Mm -hmm. That is until a more lasting solution is found. Solution, yeah, exactly. Let, let's just give them an, a number to call a GFC because I think GFC has called this forum because they're sick and tired of this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going on as though it is normal yes. and, and yeah. there's nothing that can be done. I, I think the GFC is not as paralyzed as individuals are. And I hope that GFC can do that. Yeah, well, basically, yes, uh, I will, we all hope so too, to basically position structures to be able to address people who need interventions immediately. I'm just looking at this young girl's, uh, I can see her face on the chat group, and, 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 and I, I, you know, you can see there's vulnerability, and, 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 and of course, the, 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 the lack of, of, of power per se to be able to have her case known. If, if you're a young actress or a young crew member, who is not very powerful or, or popular, you know, you're at a disadvantage. If you are known, it's easier for you to actually, like some um, um, artists will, will, will resort to social media and say, this has happened to me, that has happened to me on this set and that set. And then it becomes a flood of, of, of outrage that eventually leads to something being done. But when you don't have that kind of uh, presence on social media, who do you go to in the interim? Who can you contact immediately? Who do you report to to say, I have this problem? And like Mr. Jerry said, uh, a structure will be fabulous uh, and sooner rather than later for, 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 for aggrieved crew members, especially women, to be able to put their cases through the pipeline for redress. Um, uh, I've got another question. And I, and, and I think even just, just to add on that, uh, sorry, Adze, yes, that sir? also, I think, I don't know if ever there is an organization that is a regular... Uh, an organization of production companies, you know what I mean, where uh, production companies are actually affiliated to, you know, and if there is that kind of an organization or that organization needs to be formed, you know what I mean, so that even when every, every uh, production company should be the one that actually issues that number to its uh, whatever crew and cast and crew, yes. that yes. should there be a problem, this is the number to call. And now that actually forms, you know, you know, the 
the ombudsman that Brajeri has actually came with the word for that I was lacking, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. I, I want to talk about. I think. I think also. I'd say, at yeah, some point, let's 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 give out the details for Swift. Yes. And yeah, let's give yeah. out the details for Swift, and uh, maybe one of us later can actually read out what the objectives of Swift are, because they mm -hmm. really are advocating very strongly for women in the industry. Not mm. just actors, but every woman who finds themselves mm. in yeah. this industry. So we thank God for institutions, organizations like that. No, we do thank God yeah. for, for SWIFT. But as you notice, mm. the, the constitution of this panel is all men. <laughs> you know what I mean? And SWIFT, of course, yeah. is you know, our sisters. But what about us, the brothers? What about us, the men? You know what I mean? What about us, the wolves? You know? What but are... not, not everybody knows about SWIFT, as it. That's why we need yeah. to mm -hmm. foreground the Absolutely. good work that they're doing. Absolutely. Because yeah. I, I do know they are talking to the funding institutions to say, you guys, everybody that you fund, can you please make it compulsory that this policy is part of what you put on their table? So mm. that anyone that is found guilty, you can with, even withhold your money. Absolutely. I'm looking at a document yeah. right now from SWIFT, which is the Code of Good Practice, Handling Sexual yeah. Harassment in the Film and TV Industry. So they do have a framework for dealing with this, and they are actively pursuing it. And which brings me to a point, Ntadejari, uh, that you've raised, which is about the money. About the money. Yeah. About the money. You know, and... and it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a conclusion I want to arrive at. Is has is there a monetary aspect towards the perpetration of violations on film sets and also in production companies? Can is is there a correlation between money and the harassment? I said at the beginning of my presentation, what are the tools that these people use? And the economic status of the, the people that they are wanting to exploit is, mm -hmm. comes into, the, into picture. And, and the, the, the desperation of the people who, because there's a long queue out there, they don't beg. And, and even if they have said, to the uh, production house, to the broadcasters and to GFC, this is our budget. They can have it and know that they can exploit anybody mm. because there's a long queue outside. So the economic climate and the opportunities to exploit is being exploited to the hilt. Yes, Mandla? Another thing that I want to uh, um, you know, encourage our white brothers and our white sisters, this is not, it, it seems like when you speak a lot about gender-based violence, you know, you find a lot of black sisters speaking about it and not a lot of white uh, sisters and uh, white brothers. Also now, I mean, if you look at the film industry, you understand, you know, we experience a lot of racism and all of that, but we need our white brothers and our white sisters to be speaking about it because as we know, they attract the funding from corporate companies because that's where a lot of the funds are, and obviously they've got a huge voice when it comes to um, when it comes to economic transformation because obviously they live in sectors where they can fund such initiatives, they can fund uh, 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 you know institutions such as SWIFTs to do a lot more work. So I'd like to encourage a lot of you know our um, you know executive producers our white uh, uh, companies that work within the space to also be quite vocal and ask for those fundings within um, uh, corporate South Africa, especially the commercial uh, industries. I mean, commercial industries, you know, it's flooded with uh, obviously, you know, white businesses and things like that. And they've got a lot of the funds that can assist this movement that we are doing because it's not a black problem, especially topics such as, uh, 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 you know, sexual harassment in the workplace, and gender-based violence, you know? We, as 
black brothers and sisters are constantly vocal about it. But you know, a lot of the resources and funds, you know, we could do a lot of. So I also encourage a lot of them to basically be part of this fight and fight with us so that we can unlock corporate funding and assist these movements. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, that's actually uh, also, I, I suppose, like a, a, a pipe in the right direction towards how we solve this problem. Uh, I, I also want to talk about, um, you know, representation. You know, this is, so we talk about social harassment, we talk about, of course, gender-based violence, but there's also the issue of representation. I'm talking about, you know, employment equity and also in terms of people getting paid what they're due and what they're worth. You know, do you feel there's a balance you know, in terms of how women are being paid in the industry with, with regards to men, and also with regards to how women are being attached to positions, especially senior positions, with regards to the film and uh, TV industry? No, I think that's a, that's a question for producers. <laughs> <laughs> One in the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or two, very young producer. So uh, a lot of you know the women legends that I I employ. You know, I'm 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 first of all a fan of them. So you know what I mean. We negotiate with agents and whatever they want and require. You know, we fulfill and we gladly fulfill because obviously of where I'm coming from as a young producer. But uh, mm -hmm. I do get you, Adze. You know, and I think uh, uh, agents. Because most of the time, you know, the agents are the ones that uh, are, are responsible when it comes to um, uh, negotiating people's salaries. And I think agents need to be vigilant and they need to understand that, you know what, you know, you need to really represent your, 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 your client as equal and as fair as possible. So this conversation needs to be extended to agents and agents need to be aware of that because as producers, we never deal directly with talent. We deal with agents. Mm. 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 Um, and, and well, back to this issue of representation also. Um, and, you know, like I said in the beginning, we're all storytellers, you know, we are filmmakers mm. and in one way or the other, we contribute to the storytelling uh, landscape of South Africa and, and Africa and the world at large. Um, and I want to I want to hazard a guess and actually say that that is that it's very very possible that there is also a correlation between gender based violence, sexual harassment, and also exploitation you know of the female gender because of the kind of content we see on TV, the stories we tell. Yeah, how we position these stories, I for for for. In, 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 in from what I have seen in the landscape, it's quite possible to relate that to the nature of how society is behaving. You know how, how they say art imitates life and sometimes life imitates art. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. back to the question of, of what roles we have played personally and directly in either aiding or basically preventing the scourge of you know, harassment and coercion and exploitation that we see on our film sets, especially with regards to women. I think the hey, answer the will come okay. from everybody for that one. Mm -hmm. Because uh. the, the producers, the, those who commission productions in, within the broadcasting, the writers, everybody. Look, it's not only men who write minor roles for women so that we can pay them less. It's everybody. And so we, we, we need to address it at the beginning of this entire value chain so that we, we then can begin to say, how come we are presenting a male point of view in this story? How mm. come? Can we find another way of telling the same story so that you know we don't do what we was happening in the past? Um, in the past, what used to happen is black stories were told through white heroes' mind. Mm. You know, Steve Biko mm. is not big enough to tell a story about so find. The, the, the editor of the newspaper so that that becomes the hero 
the, the, the savior of Steve Biko. Steve Biko needed no savior, but, but somehow the international market wants a white hero and a white lead and blah, 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 blah. So similarly, we need to be, to, to re-educate ourselves to say you can tell a good story with a female lead, with a woman point of view. And, and I guess the sisters can assist us in that regard. So it's, it's, it's an opportunity. I don't wanna say it's a problem. It's an opportunity for everybody to actually tell compelling stories mm -hmm. that do foreground the women and what they have done. You know, I'll give you an example. This is theatrical, but I did a production of The Island, uh, which, and, and I decided to do it with a female cast. I haven't seen any other production like that. And I just thought, I'm going to do it. Hmm. What am I saying? It's not only black people who got us this freedom. And it's not only men who got us this freedom. And, and, and so the dynamics that you begin to say, that you begin to see on that stage, tell that with a story that you know from the past and all the way. So I just think that opportunity is available to all of us. Hmm. I think you're very, very right. And also as well, I mean, you know, you've got Minister Farrakhan who basically says, we expect women to give birth to the Messiah. And yet we don't expect women to be in the same room as the Messiah. It doesn't hmm. make sense. And also as well, I think uh, if there can be a lot of people like you, Mr. Jerem Fukeng, who take those risks, you know, to basically say, I'm going to cast a female lead. And also as well, I mean, us as Black Brain as well, you know, I think it was um, five years ago, we took a huge risk for a huge drama. And we said, we're going to create a prison show with all female leads, you know, to be in the forefront of that. And it really paid off those types of risks. And the more risks that, uh, practitioners and writers and creatives take, it's going to lead us into that better place. And I think it is changing. We are seeing a little bit of it, but as I said, you know, it's still the teething stages of a revolution. It is going to go there. Before that, it wasn't heard of where you've got an all female lead. And now it's yeah. become, oh, oh, what's next? Where are we going? And it's these types of baby steps that is going to lead us to where we all need to be. Hello? No, absolutely. Well, I, I, I don't think, I think the, the, the gentlemen have really just, you know, addressed the point very well, you mm -hmm. know, and I think I'll be just uh, again, repeating what has been said, you know, yeah, I think uh, maybe we can move to, I mean, to, 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 to other things, but yeah, it is, it is, I mean, they've articulated it very well. Okay. Give due ways, you know, ways deserved. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I also feel like there is, the issue of the quantity of the representation, but at the same time, mm -hmm. again, also the, an issue with the quality of the representation, you know, like how are women being represented on screen? So for example, my daughter is 10 years old and she's watching TV and basically all the women characters that she's seeing are basically positioned in a particular way. So fine, you know, there's gender, uh, gender roles, you know, so there's the mother roles, of course, there's the, you know, the wife role and all of the others. And then you've got the other roles. But, but in terms of representation, like how, how successful do you think we have been in terms of representing women in, 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 the, in the diversity of their existence in reality as they should be on TV? Like how- You know, I, you know in, 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 with that for me, and now it actually basically goes to the thing that I was saying, how patriarchy and goes hand in hand with colonialism and basically in this case, white colonialism. You know what I mean? And Brajeri has just hinted, you know, what, uh, because that, that is also colonization, but of another sort. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and I guess the whole thing, and the patriarchy has always viewed itself, you know, and that is why I say it had to do, it has to do with power. And I think the moment we get to a position, and, and uh, I mean, if you, the women's struggle and black people's struggle is always the same. Black people, we are still trying to find our own voice in telling you stories the way we want. You, 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 you know what I mean? Because, and we are busy trying to, you know, wade out of the, you know, like the, the murk that has been created by white colonization, you know, mm -hmm. and the white, the white view. 
And women now also now have to find themselves having to really clear the way of the male dominated, you know, and whereas on one hand we have white dominated, you know, and I think this is a process that as black people, we have to go through and be in communication with, with, uh, with ourselves on it, you know, and also begin to begin to uh, chart a path, you know, and a way for how we want to actually represent ourselves, you know, and I think we have, you know, maybe the next conversation that we need to have is a, is a, con a conversation between men and women, you know, mm -hmm. and, and on how best we can begin to tell our stories better as black people first and foremost. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's always mm -hmm. about the balance, you know, but where do you start and where do you stop? But, you know, I, mm -hmm. I always like already, you know, the, the women's stories are already at a serious disadvantage, you know what I mean, in terms of how society is positioned, which brings me to the mm -hmm. next issue of, of violence, violence against women, um, and, and what violence actually really represents and what how violence is manifested, because before you even get to the issue of harassment and coercion, and before you even get to the, the, the issue of, of exploitation, there's always that issue of violence. And, and my, my understanding of violence is, it's not, it's not that violence is any kind of act that basically is mm. physical and antagonistic towards any woman, but, but violence is mm. any act against any woman that basically compels her to make a choice that she did not want to make. Mm -hmm. Any kind of manifestation of male power that puts a woman in any position that makes it uncomfortable for her to make the choice that she would rightly want to make. And, 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 and it feels like that manifests itself in so many ways on our film sets and also on, on our production houses. And, and that is what eventually leads to the other manifestations of, of, of actual physical violence, whether it's harassment, whether it's exploitation or even coercion. Mm -hmm. and, and it's about how do we start as men checking our power? Because I'm seeing right now on the uh, chat group and um, people are of course commenting and, and, and a lot of yeah. the messages coming forward are why are these panelists all men you know and, and, yeah. and we are seen automatically as people with power people with position people are, mm. are people look up to for potential employment and for potential privilege and opportunity you know so so how then do we show up in a space that basically ascribes a certain kind of perspective to us that we now don't use that perspective in a predatory way, in a way that is basically wrong. How do we do that? You know, and, and this, this, is a, this is a question or the answer should, you know, be able, should, should appeal to the, to the smallest in the room. I, you know, like I said earlier on that this kind of platform as we are having it now, you know, it is us men talking to one another and basically calling each other out, you know, and I think basically that is the reason I think for me, or, well, that was not the reason that was stated, but that is the reason that I find, you know, and that we has, have got to be the ones that call each other out. And that actually says, you know, when we do this, it is, this is wrong, you know, mm -hmm. and I think also instead of maybe even, you know, uh, for instance, let me put it this way. Let me go uh, direct to a thing. You know, there is a situation where when, when they say no, a no is a no. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had, uh, uh, there's a play that I wrote and the, uh, there's a line that I wrote and I said, a no is a no, not a flip side, a flip side of a yes. <laughs> you know, but when we say a no is a no. Now, there's a thing that guys would hear a no and choose it to be a no that is supposed to be like, no, but I'm okay. No, but keep carrying on. You know what I mean? And there is a time when a, a guy would hear a no, and which is a no, but chooses to think no, that this is a no that is still kind of like saying yes in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think basically it will take another guy to tell the guy that said, look, dude, when you hear a no, don't try to position it. Take it as a refusal, you know, because a guy would want to argue it out, you know what I mean? And I think it will take another guy to tell another one to say, hey, a no is a no and nothing else, okay. you know? Very good. And I think for me. But, but before you continue, sir, so let's, let's, let's go yeah. back to 
little bit of the so the same issue right now, you know. Yes. When when you imagine the film set scenario, right? Men yes. and women have come to work. You know, they've yes. come to earn a living. They've come to exchange their craft for value, yes. which is money, right? Yes. And, and women are the and so I I want to imagine and believe that the women are there to look to do what they were hired to do. You know. Yes. But mm-hmm. Why is it that men? feel that they're there to work, get money, and to get more than just the money. You know, why must a man feel like I should be able to get a favor from a female crew member or a cast member alongside the salary that I'm getting? Where, where, where does that even come from? Because that, it's, uh, that, it's, look, I, that, I think the, the short you know, answer, the mm, short yeah. answer, Ajay, it's patriarchy and culture. That's the short answer. Mm. We, we can expand on that if we need mm. to, but mm. that's yeah. what it is. And, and here's one of the issues for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody oh, calls the black man to order. Mm. Uh, hear what I'm saying? Mm. Nobody calls the black man to order, especially when he's got power. Nobody. Not the law, not the church, not the film industry, not each other. Nobody does it. Because... also, you know... mm, Go ahead, go ahead, Brazil. No, no, I can't tell that one too. Okay. No, but you know another thing, and now when we get into this thing, Brajeri summed it up nicely and added, you know, it's patriarchy and culture. And again, we've got to remember that the, this actor, you know, this film crew, basically comes from a certain society. And now you look what kind of a society we live in. On the road, the taxi driver, doesn't give anybody a machine. I get some to machine. <laughs> you know what I mean? They become a law unto themselves. You know, and hence Rajiv puts it like, but again, when a black man has got power, not even the law, not even the government actually basically gives that person or calls them to order. So we got to look at the society that we're coming from. You know, and begin even to address that kind of a society, and maybe even that falls head on on how what kind of stories do we as creatives begin to tell? Hmm. 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 Uh, I've, I've got a comment here from Ayanda Boroto. Just like yeah. white people need to talk to each other about racism, men yeah. must talk to each other about GBV. Yeah. <laughs> You will not yeah. listen to those you already undermine, which is basically what you're saying, that the men must speak to the men, the wolf must speak to the wolves. Yes. And also, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. going back to um, what Dr. Jerome Fouquet was saying, patriarchy and culture. How we raise our boy kids is very different to how we raise our girl kids. You understand? Mm. All the time it's like, Esh, You know, as men, we are raised differently, you know? And uh, 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 we need to, obviously, as a society, look at fundamentally how we are raising our kids and we need to raise them equally. And that, you know, because early child development is everything. And I mean, you blink already, 18 years has gone by, you understand? So that's why we need to make sure that how we raise our kids is going to ultimately reflect on how they are going to behave later on in life. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. I mean, and, uh, and, and allow yeah. me to say, allow me to say and, and send a challenge to the legends and so-called stars and leaders to lead by example, all right? Even where they get or where we get offers of hospitality because of the desperation of the women who are next to us. And we say no, 
and yet still assist those people. I, I'm challenging the men who are the legends and the stars and the powerful and the decision makers to lead by example. And mm. you see, when, when you say no to yourself, you own the no. Yes. When, when you yeah. do it because GFC has said it, you don't own it. You don't, you're just afraid to lose your contract and your money. But when you mm -hmm. say no before the policy, and you then say to everybody, well, I, I started with, there's no production I'm going to di direct that anybody's gonna use the F word because I have chosen never to use that, never to violate anyone, never to disrespect anyone. Now, mm. with what's happening, I, I mean, yesterday I took the, the SWIFT uh, code of conduct and I send it to the production manager of the, play, the, the film I'm going to act in next time. And, and I said, look, I'd like this addressed somehow so that even if in a call sheet they say, we, we align ourselves with the swift code of conduct, just that, it says something. And if I see anyone, anyone but anyone, including the person that signs my check, brah, we don't do that. You don't do that to black sisters. So I'm addressing the thing I mentioned earlier that we're not only guilty by commission by doing it, but we're also guilty by omission, by turning a blind eye to it. And then the sharks continue to go wild around us. So I've got a note, uh, a chat from uh, Elarato and Lovu, and this is what she says. I don't think we will ever win against patriarchy. This is a girl now speaking. It's yeah. a strong thing. We are beginning to adapt to this sad reality. So basically, what we are seeing in terms of even women ready to, 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 to concede to the casting couch, as far as she's concerned, is an adaptation to patriarchy's stronghold. And, and, and I'm supposed to said. Yeah, that, is, that, that is sad. That is sad, you know, bro. That, that is sad. And I think, you, you know, um, you know, sometimes I think men can maybe function uh, very, what is it? What's the word? They can be myopic. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm. if ever you're going to be looking at your situation only on the basis that mm. you are having the power now and you are enjoying the privilege that goes mm. with it. And uh, mm. which is what, for instance, I would say, that's what uh, white colonialism and apartheid suffered from. They yes. enjoyed the privilege of, you know, creating a, bad, a terrible normal. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? And uh, that black people found themselves adapting to. You know what mm. I mean? And but this is the whole thing. Like I said, it, it, you know, power is patriarchal, and uh, and it is patriarchal not only um, only because it is white. It can also be. It is patriarchal now. Even when you look at Zimbabwe, partly mm. even somehow when you look at even maybe even our situation here in. South Africa, you know, but the thing is, it is sad to actually hear a young woman saying, you know, I'm adapting to this, you know what I mean? And it is incumbent on us as men and begin to actually, you know, trying to I mean, make sure that we address that kind of a thing. I had a situation and I, you know, that, that I, 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 I sort of, that I had to deal with where mm -hmm. now I found, I mean, there was a young woman who uh, who was basically under my tutelage, and uh, because he was in a desperate situation, I, I was also seeing that there she was going to end up basically even you know sleeping with somebody on the basis that that person was in a position of power in my environment. And mm -hmm. what I did, I actually took a very strong step and said, "Oopsie, outie, I got it. Just me, bra, but we're going to have to hold it here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean?" And because I basically I was adamant on the fact that I don't want to actually allow this woman to know to think that in order to be able to settle and get the best, they have to basically go couch casting. You, you, you see what I mean? And I would say it is really incumbent on us that we should actually not just be thinking myopically and thinking for now and realize that basically if we don't change the environment, the environment is going to uh, persist 
people, our grandchildren and our children. You know what I mean? Well, maybe now I should be looking at grandchildren and I've got two granddaughters. Mm. You know what I mean? And maybe some way, somehow in them, they actually have got the, you know, the creative, uh, uh, what is it, a gene in them. And once they want to go into the industry, they shouldn't find the industry being like this. No, absolutely. Um, it's incumbent on us. Absolutely. I've got a Nomsan Sibande here saying that we should name and shame violators so that people who abuse their power can be called to book. Let's talk about that called to book. Because we have been naming and shaming. Mm -hmm. There have been names that have come out, you know, but it has basically ended with the naming and shaming, and yet we still see the situation persist. So is the naming and shaming not enough? Is that why we are still here? Or should there but be is it, calling I, them I would to like to I, I would I would like to exercise also some kind of caution, you know, because mm -hmm. if ever you name and shame, let it be naming and shaming in a structure that would actually make sure that whatever is the assessment or whatever uh, judgment has been being, you know, because people can actually come again with false and, yes. uh, and, 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 and motivated accusations, you know. So one way or the other, we have to be careful of that, but also open up the space that, you know, there should be a creditable space where these things are go can be ventilated and so that whatever, and when that space, uh, um, that thing has been ventilated in a very uh, uh, whatever, regulated space, the judgment that comes out of that is a judgment that should be naming that person, you mm -hmm. know? But we should have a place where now this thing, and it's only when that body or regulatory body is not functioning that we can actually begin. Because I think sometimes what is happening also by naming and shaming in the media, you know, um, people can, you know, I mean, can be malicious. We can, we should, we shouldn't uh, run away from that. So is, is, that, is that the slippery slope that we're afraid of? Because we're afraid of, 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 the, of the misuse of the naming and shaming, then we're rather err on the side of not being very, very uh, harsh with our consequences for violators. Is that the real reason? But the thing is, how yeah, do you know the please, person? Uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead, Bridget. Go ahead, Bridget. Please understand that fear is real. Mm. Absolutely real. Just like I mentioned that whole concept of this action is a career limiting. And, and, and the fear of the undesirable consequences to me for having done the right thing, it's, it's, it's real. So let, let's not look down upon people being afraid to set foot and being the exceptions. Yes. At the beginning, it's going to be very difficult because it's going to have to take giants to actually come out. But the more we begin to do it and protect those people who come out, it's only then that it will, it will get traction. But in, in the meantime, the giants will continue to intimidate anyone that dares to go that direction. And all they tell you is, no, actually, I was offered. Mm. What do you say? Mm. 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 Mandla, I saw your hand up there for a bit. No, I'm saying, um, I mean, I concur with uh, 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 Make when he says, you know, we need that uh, body. You know, uh, 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 the word that came out was the ombudsman, you know, who is going to basically be that jury because, you know, a uh, uh, jury by Twitter, jury by social media, Jury by, uh, 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 you know, newspapers, Sunday newspapers can also be very detrimental to the families and also as well, um, you know, to, to, to basically the production companies and all of that, that can be really, really affected. So it is very key in terms of how we kind of navigate that process. You can't just, uh, uh, okay, cool, let's name and shame, because at the end of the day, you know, there's always two sides to every story. You know, you never know what happens, and that's why, we need that uh, body, that ombudsman, to basically take care of such a, a, a situation so that we don't let it get out there and be messy and kill potentially a, 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 a breadwinner's income just because someone you know, felt a certain way or anything like that.
Yeah, I mean, I think I, mean, I think the word we need is actually a commission. If I'm not mistaken, the right word is a commission because the ombudsman, if I'm not mistaken, it relates to service and clients. You know what I mean? That you, whereby a service provider is not uh, engaging in best practices and then you are affected as a customer. No, man, actually, mm -hmm. you know what? Actually, I, I think I'm also, on, partly I could be wrong and I stand to be corrected here. Mm -hmm. We have the gender commission, isn't it? You know, I mean, I haven't really like, just went through the, the whole, what, what, you know, what their mandate is. You know what I mean? But I'm definitely sure, uh, you know, that if, uh, you know, like maybe uh, production uh, houses should actually be the ones that have that number stated, you know, maybe on the call sheet as a, for that matter. You know what I mean? That if ever a person feels like they're sexually harassed, they can actually call uh, the gender commission. And the gender commission, you know, you know, and I'm sure they will, I'm definitely sure they will jump at it, yeah. you know. I, so, I suppose, yeah, I, I, I suppose mm. part of the problem is the lines are blurred in almost every direction, you know, from the victim, the perpetrator, and vice versa. And until and we have enough presidents. So even as we've been speaking, in my mind, I'm trying to recall back how many cases have we heard of and how did they get resolved what was the conclusion? And even if I ask you to kind of, you know, go, go back in your minds and think about cases that basically were resolved, you, you will battle to find, you know, a, a clear cut, uh, how shall I say, verdict like you'll get in, in court concerning cases that are criminal. And we want to believe that, in fact, I don't want to believe, I believe that, you know, cases of sexual harassment, coercion and exploitation are criminal in nature. You know, because mm -hmm. the rights of a particular human being are being infringed upon. And, and even if it's not seen as a moral one, it's criminal, it's illegal, and should receive the same kind of harshness that, you know, you not paying your taxes should actually receive, you know, for lack mm -hmm. of a better example. You know, but, but, yeah. but there is a, a dance around the issue that, 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 number one, when you look at how production houses operate, they operate also in isolation, you know. So, so you're not really aware of what's really going on until you are told, this is what's happening. But I suppose in corporate spaces, that's how it is. Not everybody opens their doors to say, hey, this is what we're doing, this is how we're doing it, you know, till something happens and then you get to, to find out. So, so it, it does feel like a lot of, of, of structures have to be put in place to get to the point whereby, you know, a, 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 this sort of issues can be addressed immediately because it's all about making the, safe, the space safe. The space... I think safe. You know, I, I, I still, I, and I would want to reiterate this, that I think the gender commission is mm -hmm. the place gender equality what is the, the, the commission for gender equality mm -hmm. that is the that, that is the that, that is the best place for us to actually even begin to deal with this sexual harassment because i think they have the the experts you know in, in, in the commission and they and and basically that's where these things will be properly ventilated and i think mm -hmm. you know like like i was saying I think every production house, and we are going to be starting to work together, <laughs> Mandla, you know, uh, basically, you know, on our call sheet, we should have the toll free, the, 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 the call, uh, what is the number for the Commission for Gender Equality, so that where, the, where there should be, there are issues of that, maybe, you know, and people should go and should call a thing and have the thing ventilated there. Like, you know, Mandla was saying that, and look, I have been a victim of that in one way or the other, you mm -hmm. know, where now somebody just went to the media and those things may bro. Talk about career limiting. They mm -hmm. are career limiting. Mm -hmm. You know, they are career limiting. And, uh, and career limiting is not only on one side, but it's also on the other, you know, mm -hmm. because an allegation made by a woman, you know, people tend to believe it without any reason, you know, mm. without a, any evidence at times. Fantastic. Mm. I, I, this is just a chat from the GFC. We need to mm. equally address with violation everyone in the workplace, of course. Government agencies should be involved, and they've signed a pledge to promote and support the SWIFT Code of Conduct to begin addressing unspoken issues that have been, of course, you know, uh, affecting our industry uh, adversely. And amongst mm -hmm. plans to ensure Productions, you know, in, uh, institute good practices in the workplace, and 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 GFC will also basically train all from their productions, and I suppose in etiquettes and ethics, and of course the moral code in terms of harassment and and policy that was developed by by Swift, 
and and of course yes the gender for uh, commission the commission for gender equality uh, will be engaged to regulate <laughs> of course they're busy doing that uh, manage sexual and conduct sexual conduct sexual conduct issues on film sets so 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 that's their, that's their commitment that's them yeah but, yeah but like, uh, like i said in the beginning of this uh, conversation you know we as brothers who are being seen as giants in this industry are being looked up to as 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 people with potential solutions and 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 people who can actually change bring about change in the landscape you know for our granddaughters like and uh, tatisela has said and 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 i suppose uh, one question here which um stands out and i just want to bring that because it's a question that applies to each and one of us personally is if at all in our experiences you know we have had to deal with cases of violations either either uh, reported to us by others either perpetrated by us to others or either perpetrated by others onto us on a personal level and how do we resolve that um look i think in the space that i have played for instance it has been the space of um basically like domestic violence you know and um, the thing is what how did i basically and uh, deal with it i dealt with it by making sure that i change you know what i mean and i think you know and this is also one thing that somehow has got to be what's it laid on the table you know that um in life we do certain things because we didn't know any better mm. you know what i mean and i think when you basically like as you grow up and as you engage your conscience as well you know and i think for me it was it was even not even because i was you know admonished from outside it was actually me being admonished by my own conscience you know what i mean and i think that is one thing that also we've got to start cultivating in ourselves that anybody who's listening be it men or women let's begin to cultivate our conscience and begin to want to create the kind of world that we would want to uh, that we will all be uh, proud of and be happy to leave as a legacy even to our children and as i speak you know even now you know i mean i've got a 21 year old and a 23 year old and without fail i'm actually passing on the knowledge and the understanding you know that i have gathered in life to them so that they don't make the same mistakes that i have made you know uh, and and for me that is you know um the thing that we've got to do we we have to make sure that we create a better template than the template that we have had throughout the age and take control on of the you know the 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 the, 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 the trajectory that we want our society to take yeah thank you for that sir all right i've walked away from a few scenarios where there was somebody disempowered wanting to say thank you because they they had no other methods or gadgets or anything to say thank you and you just say listen i'm getting paid to do what i do you don't owe me anything and 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 yes they feel ashamed and whatever after that to think oh isn't that a jerry now going to think i'm a bad woman i'm a bad girl i do these sorts of things and, and so after that kind of scenario you then have to counsel those people to say mm -hmm. i understand and 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 it all makes sense however not with me not mm. with me and i wish you could go on in your career without having to do that and and please understand when silo talks about the abuse there are those people who because they want to pull you down they send the girls on you mm. because they want to create a story about you the purposeful setups and let's also acknowledge that and uh, those setups are from men and women because they have issues 
with who you are, what you are, what you're doing, the agenda that you are pursuing. So there's also that issue. And, and let's, we live in the world. That's what happens. So mm. let me tell you the, the biblical pro uh, solution of Joseph, walk away. Don't try and negotiate, walk away because you don't know. I, I, I was in the States when there was a black mayor who they, he got somebody to come to his uh, place and, and there were cameramen behind the curtains. And that was the end of him, the end of his career. And, and so it's a pity. There is a lot of the PhD syndrome also that we have to deal with. And then our sisters are used as pawns in that regard. Um, I didn't want to go there. That's why I, you saw me reluctant to answer this question. But yes, we've had to deal with those. And, and I was in an organization set up where I, I, the group that had come with me to like a festival sort of thing, I, I made it clear to everybody, don't touch. Don't touch. It was like, who does he think he is? Is he going to marry those girls? You get labeled. And you see, too many a time, we run away from what we believe because we are afraid of labels that gets attached to us. And, and it takes growing up and integrity to say, pluck the label, go ahead. I stand by the principle that I stand for. Because really, the vultures, they are ruthless and they are quite open, but the good men are not open. And what we're saying is, let's have a few good men in each production, in each environment, so that if two agree, it's like gents, and then the third one comes up and says, no, I agree with you. I will live by example and I will say it. That's where uh, the policies and all that will, will support that. But mm. until and unless the men in this industry own this, mm. we're going nowhere. Mm. And, and also, but, you know, just to add on that, Brajir, is that also we should realize that where our nation is going is actually incumbent on us what we do. You know, and in fact, we are in a very, very powerful space, you know, and the, how we do things, you know, actually, I mean, tabloids, tabloids are having fun because, or they are what they are, because people who make the tabloids to sell are actually people who are more in the, what, in, 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 whatever, in the entertainment industry or public people, you know, people who are in public. You know what I mean? And that's what makes it, uh, you know, the tabloids. And uh, But also, we shouldn't even forget the other aspect, that gossip is nice. Everybody yeah. loves gossip. You know what I mean? Everybody mm -hmm. loves gossip. So, you know, those are the things that we, we, we you know, we, we, we got to bear in mind that, you know, they are at play here. You know, mm -hmm. and, but we really have got to take responsibility on where we are taking our nation to. Our nation is, a, you know, one of the things that I remember, even, you know, the times of generation, sometimes I used to, when I looked at how people were like, who are you, who are you? And at the back of my mind, I used to say, but what is it that I'm doing that is helping them to get out of the situation that they are in? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And at yeah. the time, there was nothing. You know, and when you looked at generation, it was just entertainment. Mm. You know, somewhere it made people to dream, but the truth of the matter, it was not doing anything to them. You know, so somewhere somehow as black people and as black leaders in our industry, we got to start thinking consciously and be driven by our conscience and know that we are rebuilding and reconstructing a, a what is it, a nation and the African nation that has been downtrodden for centuries. Mm. Mm. And, and here's what we need to accept, at When we speak, people listen. And, and, and somehow <clears throat> the world thinks 
their legends. The world. <laughs> yeah. They think we know. And 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 they listen. And and we, it's it's up to us to exploit that ear that listens, that says, I don't yo, I'm advertising now. I'm writing a book that says I'm a man mm. and I don't. Mm -hmm. I am a man and I don't. Therefore, I'm saying I'm a man, therefore I'm not a cripple. Mm. Don't, don't say he's a man, therefore it makes sense. No, mm. it doesn't make sense no. and it's not right. Wow. It's yes. not right. Mm. And, 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 and so I, I wish to challenge those legends and everybody on this platform and other platforms that will play this uh, clip here to say, open your mouth in the production, in whatever, and someone will listen, yeah. someone. Yeah. Yes. But definitely. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> like knowledge that I'm giving to <laughs> my elders, and uh, I think, you know, I'd be doing injustice to the platform if I was speaking a lot more, because you know what, uh, uh, obviously the two gentlemen are speaking about is what we face on a daily basis, I'd say, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, after productions, it's the rap parties, it's the, you understand, we, our industry is, it, it, it's a culture of celebration through and through. Do you get what I'm saying? We kind of go there to that space to play. And we need to shift that type of mindset from, you know, because, uh, I mean, my biggest philosophy is every day that I'm on set, it's another day in paradise. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's not just for me. It's all other filmmakers and all sorts of things. We don't have that whole notion that we are going into a corporate space. So obviously such chats and such things will open, will definitely open up and um, give the young people, you know, that type of knowledge and that type of awareness so that they understand exactly that as much as you know, this is great, this is fun, this is beautiful, this is passion, it's a workplace and it needs to be respected and treated so. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and even to, you know, to add on that whole thing of, you know, and uh, the whole thing of, of using the analogy, the analogy of, of the head. And that goes also to, even to women, because they too have got heads. You know what I mean? And their brains are basically monitoring. You know, I mean, when a person, you know, when a person gets brain damaged, you know, one thing that becomes very clear is that that person is non-existent. Some way, somehow, they can keep a keep that person alive with a, you know, a, you know, with machines. But mm -hmm. when the brain is not working, you know, then the, that person is buggered. You know, and I think basically by not allowing ourselves to use our heads and our brains, we are actually lending ourselves into situations where we are almost dysfunctional, you know, and as if we, we are actually, if we, are, we become worse off than animals, you know, animals through instincts, they maintain their kingdoms. Hmm. And our kingdom, uh, the human kingdom is in disarray, hmm. all because we are not wanting to use our brains and our minds and want to actually, you know, we, 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 we subscribe to the culture, one thing led to another. Mm. No, mm. you are constantly making choices. Yes. There's no one thing, you know, and you know, as you understand, even, even in, the, in the industry, as actors, you are constantly making choices on how to play something. And in life too, you make choices, you know, and people have got to be responsible for the choices that they make. And what, wherever, whatever thing that they do leads up to finding them in the wrong, they shouldn't be blaming the situation. They should be blaming themselves. But people mm -hmm. don't want to take responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we have, this situation has been created by men. It's not an accident. It's not a natural disaster. Society, yeah. and by society, I mean patriarchy and men have created this very, very uh, toxic situation whereby a lot of women do not feel safe on film sets and and young women are afraid for no, but, you, 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 sorry, sorry, if, I may, if i may interrupt it is not only that women are not feeling safe on film set women don't feel safe everywhere yes. you know what i mean and that is a problem yes definitely. yes definitely you know 
Mm -hmm. So we've got to address this on and off the set. Exactly. Yeah. The culture yeah. has got to be addressed on and off the set. Absolutely. Yeah, no. So uh, there's a, um, and of course, there's another, uh, we try as much as possible to be very, very uh, all encompassing in terms of, you know, the potential pool of those who can be vulnerable and victimized. <laughs> uh, and, and it's clear that, you know, even men are also in this pool of those who can be vulnerable. But we're talking about women here in particular because it is that, that house that is on fire, like they say. Yeah. If, it's not even though all lives matter at the moment, black lives matter. At, even though we're talking about, you know, society matters, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of based violence, but we're speaking specifically to the women issue about how they matter right now and how they should be, uh, um, how, their issue, how the issue of, of, of what is affecting them on sets is basically addressed and how we as men play our part in making sure that happens. Um, look, uh, we've come almost to the end of this particular session and I just want to throw the floor open to uh, our panelists in case of anything mm -hmm. that we have to add. Uh, there have been quite a couple of en engagements from the uh, YouTube uh, uh, live uh, stream um, and, and everybody is Basically, uh, Nomsa Sibande has been very, very vocal. She's been speaking about why don't we have PR, HR departments and production companies? You know, how is it possible that production companies that deal with human resources basically as the main resource, but don't have a human resource? <laughs> <laughs> That's a serious anomaly. That's a serious human anomaly. You don't have a show, you know, but yet you don't have a human resource. So it's a very, very powerful point. Ayanda Baroto also basically endorses that point, where is HR? And HR are not biased. They don't know you. They don't know the producer. They're not friends with anybody. You know, So they can, of course, be objective in how they execute their services and their jobs instead of, because I know it, it does get very, very amorphous when you have hired a particular actor whom, for example, now I'm casting you in Tejeri, and I'm well going to ask you to audition. And if I were to hear that that Jerry is doing a particular sort of thing, it becomes very difficult for me to engage. Of course, I would have to, you know, hand that over to somebody who does not have the same kind of blindness that I do. And I think that's one way forward in terms of dealing with mm. this. Issue. Um, but yet, like I said, uh, let me throw the floor open to our panelists in terms of closing remarks. Um, over to you, gentlemen. How do we make? How do how how do we basically? Decolonize this sector once and for all. And it doesn't hey, even have to be. Kuluma. Kala Take your parting shot now. Definitely. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much, gentlemen. I've really learned a lot. And it's been an honor to, as I said, to be part of this panel. And I'd love to basically just leave our audiences with these words. The more you learn, the more you realize how little you know. And this type of topic needs to be said all the time. It needs to be reiterated. Education is key. And we can never have enough conversations around this matter. And uh, uh, as I said, it's the beginning now and to change it now. So thank you very much uh, 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 to you, Adze. You were really, really amazing as our uh, chair. Um, <laughs> but thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. I receive it. Anyone, any compliment is welcome right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Adze, thank you, thank you, and uh, you have you have driven the, this ship, you know, very well. Uh, I see the director that you are now. I know. <laughs> I've never haven't worked with you, but now I know. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. But, but yeah. But uh, I, I would like to thank uh, GFC for organizing this first and foremost. I think it is a, a, an invaluable, um, you know, platform that we all converged on and basically ventilated, the, uh, you know, the, this uh, burdening subject. And also even thank uh, Brajeri for, you know, for his company. And Mintos, thank you too for, you know, being part of this. And uh, what I would, now in my conclusion is that I think if, uh, I, I, I would want to urge, I don't know if ever CGE has got actually, um, you know, done this, commission, uh, the Commission for Gender Equality, that if they could basically just get a, a data of all the film companies, 
and reach out to them so that they should be the neutral place where all these things will be ventilated, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a first start, you know, because I think even, you know, production houses, you know, we are actually, they're actually forced to deal with things that they are not experts in. They are experts in making movies. They are not experts in actually uh, uh, regulating things pertaining to, you know, gender equity and uh, gender relations. You know, uh, for me, that is it. And uh, thank you for guys out there. Thank you for, you know, for those who are watching and, you know, finding us. We are, you know, hope, hopefully we are giving them something, you know, to, to chew on. And uh, we really need to make our country a better place and make our society a better society and begin to tell better stories that will make us better human beings. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jerry? Yeah, my typical academic thing. <laughs> um, let me say, I you, see, you know, earlier I said, how does, <laughs> how does a colonized environment look like at the mm -hmm. beginning? Let me say, how does a decolonized environment look like? Just four words for me. One, respect. Mm. Seeing women as equals and as qualified professionals. Forget the gender mm. and look at them for who and what they are. Mm. They are equals and qualified professionals. Two, supporting playing our part in the production environment, being in those people's team for their delivery of excellence. Mm -hmm. in, in soccer, when you're playing midfield, you pass the ball to those who ought to score. Yep. You don't hold it just because you're jealous they are going to get the man of the match uh, award. You pass them on. Acting, oh boy. Acting is like playing a game of tennis. The more I play my best tennis, the more the opponent plays good tennis that they never thought they could play. So let, let's be supportive of our colleagues. Three, it's enabling. In other words, let us provide them with the tools to succeed and compete. Now, if you are one of those people who is intimidated, you can't do this. Mm. But if you say, listen, I have the so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so that I mentored and I passed them and I enabled them, I gave them the books, I helped them to become assistant directors, let's enable them. And number four, it's rewarding. Mm. Fair compensation for work done. Mm. Nothing under the table nothing between the sheets. And, and so those words, respect, support, enable, and reward, sum up a decolonized space. And GFC, thank you for putting this platform up. Majita, thank you for saying it without censorship. And Adze, bra, itada. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, I am at a loss for words. This has been a very humbling and powerful uh, session, and um, it is my hope and prayer that that seeds have been sown towards change, that that we go from this platform to execution, that women in our society, our sisters, our daughters, our granddaughters, our wives, our partners, our friends, will be as empowered as we are. That yeah. if we find ourselves in the space whereby we are in the way, we must get out of the way so that they can forge their own path as well. Uh, equality is, is not milk. You know, it, it, equality is another country and we have no choice but to actually find ourselves in that promised land of equality. And the sooner, the better. <laughs> the sooner, the better. It, it's just, there's just no compromising that. And thank you, GFC, once again, for uh, allowing us this platform, this privilege for us to basically lend our voices to this very necessary conversation and th this very necessary crusade. Um, we, we, we look forward to more engagements and we look forward to, to more communications and feedback concerning some of the things that we've actually mentioned here 
in terms of them being executed. I'm sure as the days go by, I'm hoping not months and not years, but as the days go by, we will see concrete steps and decisions being taken towards making our firm and television workspaces safe for everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, on behalf of uh, the GFC, I'm signing out. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, yes, uh, have a wonderful weekend. You know, stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Me, I think someone likes you. Why don't you come with me and let me show you something? Show me what? Just trust me. There are days though when everything falls into place in a series of events so ridiculous. What is that? No, get more fun, get more power. That if you paid attention, you'd realize you're hurtling straight into the arms of your destiny. There's always a price to pay. You've just got to be bold enough to pay. Chicken. We love chicken, we're black. Hi, this is Hungary the Food. Join her. Lo Msaba Lasu. Yeah, I'm back. How you know? Change the face of education. In fact, now I mean, you change the face of journalism. I am I am here looking for the principal's office. Sorry, girl, you're in the wrong place. But I'm an English teacher. Mar, this is African school. The, the, the spec said that you didn't need experience. I don't know why you come to this school. Come. What a shame! What a shame! What a shame! In your new South Africa, forget it, man. You, you're always blaming everyone in your life for your mistakes. So that's your fault, Malume. Mazukulu maganja alawena. Yes, don't even think about it. Charlotte, I've got no ways. As we go past, ya mabangle ko na manza pumem mo tuinzo at kada ni kalay ang mabu mabu mabu. Bangi. Enda, ugu chumbo pet. Ugu na wakip suko. Why are you? People so obsessed in competing with our people. Death penalty is crucial in South Africa today. Crime is sky high. Don't you people have enough? We have nothing.
Thank you.